Welcome to another video of SyncPix. In today's video, we'll be using Metal as a Service Mass, which is Clonical Mass by Ubuntu. Metal as a Service or Mass is a powerful tool that simplifies the management of physical servers, allowing for the efficient deployment and scaling of infrastructure. So Metal as a Service is provisioning with Windows, ESXi, and Linux. I have provided a comprehensive guide to install and configure Mass on Ubuntu. I'll be using Ubuntu Server. If you want to know how you can install Ubuntu Server, if you want to know how you can get started with Proxmox, I have provided the link in the description. This is the server, which is Ubuntu Server 22.04. I'll be just changing its name. I'll click here and let me just first of all change its name. Its name will be Mass. So we'll be starting the server. I configured the static IP for this. I'll be able to access this using terminal. So you can use any terminal. You can use PuTTY or you can use the Windows terminal. I'll be using Windows terminal. So I'll be using SSH. It will be amjad at 192.168.7 and enter the password. And if you want to check what is the IP address of your server, of course, you can log into your server here. And if I type in IP address, you can see here the IP address 192.168.240.7. That is where I'm able to access it. Of course, you can use the commands on the same server also without uh, accessing it using terminal. So you can access the console directly here. But to get the flexibility, I am accessing it on my local machine here. You can see here when I installed Ubuntu server, it was named as Ubuntu server 22. I'll be changing the host name. In order to change the host name, we can edit the host name file. So which is sudo, I'll be doing nano slash etc slash host name. I'll be entering the password. You can see here host name right now is Ubuntu server. So I'll be changing it to mass. I can use mass as a host name. You can of course use any name. So I'll press control X, we save, yes. We'll reboot the server now. And once it is rebooted, we'll be of course accessing it again. Enter the password here. You can see here that the host name is changed now. It is mass. Now we'll be using the guidelines. So first of all, we'll be trying to update the packages and then upgrade the package. You need to do sudo app update and it will get all the latest packages. Here you can see two packages can be upgraded. So I'll be doing sudo apt and dist upgrade. So it will upgrade those two packages which are available to be upgraded. I'll press yes here and now it has been upgraded. It is a good idea to reboot the server because if there is any package that has been updated, you will make sure that latest packages are running. Sudo reboot again and then we will access this again using the SSH terminal. Enter the password and after rebooting, the next step is to install Mass using Snap. Snap is in fact containerized application which will have all the required packages and repositories already installed within this particular Snap. So snap is the best way to get started with any application. So we'll be using this command. To make this process simple, I have written all these commands for you so that you can just copy and paste. I'll do the same thing. I'll copy the command from here and I'll paste it here and press enter. So it will get the snap, snap core, which is of course the containerized application. And then once it is done, then it will get the mass 3.4 version. So 3.4 is the latest version. The same details are also available on the mass official website. Make sure that you install latest release right now. Latest stable release is 3.4. That's why I'm installing it. All right, you can see here that mass 3.4 stable release has been installed. The so first step here is that we need to disable the time service here because it might conflict with the service which will be enabled by mass. We'll be using this command to disable the system time sync. You can see here that it has removed these both services from here. And then we'll be moving to the next step. And what is that next step? The next step is to install PostgreSQL. So we'll be installing Postgres database here sudo apt install with y extension which will of course press yes every time it will ask for the confirmation and then postgresql it will install the latest version which is of course 14 right now it is recommended to install 14 version for 3.5 onward so if you are using 3.5 it will not support version 12 if you are already using version 12 so you have to upgrade that 
So once the Postgres is 100% installed, I'll be rebooting the server and then we will move to the next step. You can see here that Postgres has been installed now and now I'll be doing sudo reboot till the time it reboots. So we'll be waiting for this. Enter. Now our PostgreSQL is ready. First of all, we need to create the user in Postgres. In this particular command, if you can see here that I use a user as mass with encrypted password mass pass. And here down you can see I then created the database and it is mass tb. You can see here these commands are very simple. So we'll be using this particular command here. So we'll copy this command from here and it will create the user with the password encrypted mass pass. Enter here. Role has been created. You can see here. Now we need to create the database here. You can see here dash o is owner. So who will be owning this database? This will be owned by mass, which is the user. So we'll copy this again here and paste it over here. It will now create the database with the ownership permission to mass. So mass db is the database. Mass is the user. Now we'll be making few changes in the configuration of the PostgreSQL. So what is that configuration? We'll be editing the configuration file here. I'll just copy this again and paste it over here and we'll be just going at the bottom of this configuration file and we'll be adding this configuration. We'll be mentioning here and control X to exit and Y to confirm, press enter to save. Now the configuration has been saved and if you see I have provided you the guide also, screenshot also where it has mentioned that it has to look like this. If you see here again, if I go down here, it is same as this. So only this line we have added. We did not make any other change. Now we need to initialize mass. And there are two methods to initialize. If you are testing it, of course, you can use test database. You don't need to install the database if you want to just test it before deploying. But I'll be using this on production server. I'll be using this to automate my infrastructure my data center so for that i'm installing it and you can see here now we'll be initializing mass to initialize mass we can of course use pseudo mass in it but for initializing what we are initializing a region and rack we are initializing with the database url and this is the database url which is postgresql mass mass pass and it is on localhost with mass tb so i'll be copying this it will be initializing region plus rack and the database URL is Postgres mass is the user mass pass is the password at localhost mass tb. So we'll be just pressing enter here. You can see here it is saying that what will be the mass URL default is IP address of the server with the port 5240 and mass. In case you want to change it, you can of course change it, but I'll be going with default. Press enter. Now it will perform the database migration. See here. In the guide, we need to, of course, create the user. You can see here sudo mass create admin, and this is the command that we need to use. But of course, we can access this server right now. If I open the server here, let me copy this URL here and paste it over here. You can see here that it has already installed. And what we need to do now, we need to, of course, create the admin account here. So I'll be doing here sudo mass create admin enter. And we need to of course provide the details of what will be the admin user, what will be the password and all of that. So I'll be using the admin user here. Password will be here. Retype the password, email and then here in case you want to import the SSH key. So I'll be doing that otherwise we'll be pressing enter. So I'll show you how we can import the SSH key also. Our server is now ready and we are now okay to configure the server or we are now ready to configure the server we simply need to log in and start configuring it so i'll be just logging into this the first thing that you will see here that it will ask you to configure the dhcp server if you want to use the dhcp server of mass you can use that but i'm already having dhcp server which is pfsense i'll be using pfsense as a dhcp server machines will be given the ip addresses from there so i have explained you that in the configuration section let us move to the next video and see how we can do the configuration of mass for production environment.